Welcome to this episode of the AI Show. We're going to talk about WinML. We got a little bit into it last time with Wilson, but I think this is the episode since now it's been released and people can look at it. We're really going to start to understand what WinML is and the power that it's going to have in your application. So I have here with me Roseanne and Wilson. Why don't you introduce yourselves? We'll start with you, Roseanne. Hi, hi, Sav. Hi, everyone. I'm Roseanne. I'm a program manager uh, at the WinML team. Fantastic. Wilson? Hi, I'm Wilson. Um, I'm actually from the Cloud AI Pi team. Yeah, and their team is cool because they make cool stuff. And I, I love, so a lot of the AI shows are with these people because they make all the fun stuff. But let's start with WinML and why it's important. What is it? Describe it for us. Sure. Uh, WinML is a new machine learning API that we're releasing with the next major update of uh, Windows, Windows 10 which basically allows you to evaluate your pre-trained machine learning models locally uh, on uh, Windows devices. Um, and the highlights of WinML and like the things that I really think are the cool things about it is that it enables you to run like scenarios where you have really strict performance requirements and you cannot like uh, pay that performance um, um, cost of going back to the cloud to do your evaluations. Uh, and also, you can um, you can uh, make it really um, straightforward for a developer to understand the cost associated with like operationalizing their models into their apps, uh, because then you're running locally. Um, and there are also scenarios that could benefit, like where you have concerns around user data privacy. Right. So um, the one of the best things about WinML for developers is that it enables all of the scenarios uh, in a very easy and straightforward way to use our APIs. And plus, we also uh, take the burden out of the developer to do like hardware acceleration. So we do optimizations on CPU, do optimizations on the GPU on behalf of the developer. And, and that's really nice because I've been able to do some of this stuff before, but not nearly as fast as some of the stuff that you do, specifically with model inferencing. And one of the cool things that I like about this the most is that now you can take any Onyx model and make the OS run it for you when you do evaluation. Is that right? Exactly. WinML supports Onyx, uh, which is this standard format for machine learning. Um, and once you have your Onyx model, you can just load it into Visual Studio. Um, and we're going to be able to uh, run the model on any Windows device uh, on your behalf. So when you say on any Windows device, do you mean like the gamut of everything Windows runs on? Yeah, the gamut of different hardware that Windows runs on, like uh, Surface, uh, Surface, Desktop, um, even like uh, data centers, servers. So Windows 10, like uh, we're going to be able to uh, like hardware accelerate your uh, evaluations um, on any GPU that you have in there, and you don't even need to worry about like which drivers uh, these GPUs are that you have to target to be able to access these GPUs. Um, if you don't have a GPU, we're going to fall back to the CPU for you. So it's really easy for the developer. And that's amazing because, like I said before, I had to tweak everything, and this driver had to be there, and that other thing had to be there. But now with WinML, if it's an Onyx model, you just put it in and you run it. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Pretty so simple. let's get into like how you actually use this because I, I'm interested. Uh, and Wilson, maybe you can sort of dovetail on what we did last time on our show. How do you take a model and actually burn it into your program? Yeah, that's actually pretty fascinating because as a developer like myself, I don't know too much about how to train the model or how to even use the model. But because of Windows ML, make it really easy. So as you were saying, the last show that we had, we talked about how to train it on the cloud. Uh, we had a chest X-ray model to detect uh, lung diseases and so on. And then with that, we actually uh, generated an Onyx model, which we can actually bring it into our uh, uh, project and actually run it locally. And, and so why don't you describe what a model actually is? Because we use the term model a lot, but I'm not sure, maybe there's some people watching that are like, oh, I don't know what a model is. What is, what is a model? Well, a model is basically uh, we train a whole bunch of data set that actually have instructions in there. And uh, I'm not the best person to describe that. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, I would say that it's a model that has instructions that in there that can actually help you make decisions and, and so on. And as, as I said before, as a developer, I don't have to care about any of that, but I know how to use it. And that's a really cool way of putting it because, like, for example, when, I'm, when I want to make a PDF, I just call a function and it does it. I don't know how it works. Exactly. 
I don't want to know how it works, to be honest with you, right? I don't want to know how to write PDFs. But these models then are these like these units of execution that were generated in a different style. Mm -hmm. And all our job as programmers to do is yep. to bring these models in and run them somehow. Yes, and we never were able to do that before. Um, when we were talking about writing intelligent apps before, it's always, hey, can we actually call a somewhere that's deployed in a cloud, like a common service API that we do an HTTP call on to actually get that that, that information um, um, and actually run something uh, AI on our application. But now I can actually run everything locally. It's extremely powerful. And that's cool because like I said, it, it, like they said at the Windows Developer Day, it runs on anything that has DirectX 12. So you might have a tiny device sitting somewhere in the middle of nowhere, it's not going to be able to make a cloud call, but you still want to keep track of things and you still want to run these models. Yep. And this is a perfect scenario for that. Yep, absolutely. All right, well, let's get into how you do it. Yeah, absolutely. So just like what Roseanne was saying, um, let's assume that um, we were working with, uh, let's say, our counterpart, uh, the data scientist. They say, hey, I've trained a model and I converted into Onyx, right? So as a developer, you get the Onyx file in here, and you can actually put it in Visual Studio um, in your project directly, and it will actually generate some classes for you. So it should be as simple as this. You actually add, uh, we already have an Onyx model. And is this a UWP app? Sorry to This run. is a uh, UWP app awesome. that we actually built, and actually this code is actually um, um, available, will be available in GitHub uh, soon. Cool. So we opened a folder and we found our uh, Onyx model right here. And we added to the project. Now, while it's adding, uh, Visual Studio has an extension in there where it actually was able to take all the information from the model and actually generate a wrapper class f automatically for you. So as you can see, we have a model called Chess X-ray model. It actually generate uh, the input class. It actually generate the output class for you. And it actually has a model that allows you to um, do things. But the most fascinating thing about this generated class is that um, if we look at how this is calling the um, uh, Windows ML API, it's actually very fascinating because if you can actually dig into it, you'll see that we're actually basically calling three lines of code to actually allow you to actually run this locally. Let's see them. Yeah, absolutely. So the first line of code is really over here. It actually say, okay, so we want to load the model to tell that, hey, I have an Onyx model. I want to load it in Windows ML, and this is the call to actually do that. It actually say, um, load model from storage file and it will load the model into Windows ML for you. So that's where you're number one. Now, let's say that after you load the file, you have your input. In this case, we have a picture, and we're going to see how the app works a little later on. Uh, what happens is that you need to bind the values, and that's your second line of code over here. So basically, you create a new binding, and you bind your input and your output format into the uh, binding object itself. Of course, the last line of code that it's kind of obvious is that you need to evaluate the, the model itself, and, and, and with just uh, and, and evaluate the model itself. And with that, it will actually generate the output and you can use the output to actually show it in the app. Awesome, so this is load, load, mm -hmm. bind, and evaluate. Exactly. And, awesome. and the thing that's cool about that is like it generates the classes. Because mm -hmm. I've used other stuff before, mm -hmm. and I have to have intimate knowledge of the graph mm -hmm. and how I need to, where I need to put things and where the things come out. Mm -hmm. It's nice that this actually lays it out for you. Yes, and, and that's kind of important for developers. Not that we don't care about models. I'm sure that anyone um, who develops, if they want to learn it, they will be able to learn it. But as a developer, you care more about the architecture of your code, the user experience. You want to make better UI. You want to make, um, make sure that your code it, it actually um, scales and also make sure that um, uh, you know your, your, your architecture design is correct and all those things. With that, and you also have to all the intimate knowledge of how a model works might be a little bit too much. Just like I don't really want to know how a PDF file is written, <laughs> but I know that I load the library, I bind some values, and then I evaluate. It's kind of the same thing. A little, I'm stretching a little bit, but I think it's the same concept mm -hmm. of a model as a unit of execution. Mm -hmm. We don't know how it was made, but Windows ML helps us use it. Yes. Fancy. All right, let's see it in action. Yeah, absolutely. So basically this app, uh, uh, it's an app that we built. Uh, it's called the uh, Windows Machine Learning Explorer. Um, it actually allows you to actually load multiple models in there. But one interesting thing that, that, that we've done is that uh, we actually took the model that we talked about in the last show mm -hmm. and we loaded it into this application and now we can actually evaluate it. So what the, uh, just a little recap of what we've done last time is that uh, our data scientists so you know, actually trained a model, lung disease model, where you can actually detect disease chest, um, lung diseases from chest x-ray pictures. Uh, so we built this app where you can actually select a picture and then automatically you actually display the results that what kind of disease is actually detected. Right. Okay. So that's actually pretty cool. And you see that um, 
and actually execute. This is currently executing on CPU. It's decently fast, and if we switch it to GPU, it, uh, in some machines, if you have very high power GPU, it's even faster. Right. Another thing that we know is that, hey, because we actually do that, then we can actually do this in real time. And here's the cool thing that I, I just realized, like these, these particular chest x-rays, let's just say, like these have been released and they're public, a public data set. Yes. But my personal chest x-rays, if I'm putting them in this, you can't really send that out mm -hmm. of this box. Yes. And, 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 and absolutely. And, but the whole point is that uh, we're, we are, um, yes, you cannot say data privacy is a big, big deal. Yeah, and so this helps with that. Because yeah, you know, it just yeah. does it here locally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, but here, what we want to show is that the power of uh, Windows ML, right? Mm -hmm. In the sense that we got a model, now we can load it. Yeah. Any model that you want, you can actually load it in your app and actually display it. But one thing that I want to show is that how can we actually do this in a real time setting? Okay. Right? So basically, we are actually turn on our camera. Let's make the camera not point to us. Let's turn on the camera. And then now, you can actually score and actually evaluate the model on the fly. Uh, right here, as you can see, the, the, how if we move, well, you keep moving around. Yeah, man. I keep You're moving around. It's kind of hard. <laughs> and also, um, yeah, there you go. So it's a little bit better when I have the right angle and uh -huh. things like that. So we can actually do it very quickly on the fly in real time as well using Windows ML uh, for all this. And that's really cool because this is all happening. You know, the operating system is taking care of it, and it's super it's, fast. Yes, it's extremely fast. And and I'm really happy that uh, now that because of that now. Um, we can, uh, as a developer, I don't need to worry about the models. I can just play around the app, make sure that it works and, and everything looks great on it. Fantastic. So just to recap, it's, it's load the model, mm -hmm. bind the inputs and outputs, yes. and then evaluate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So that's, that's really easy. So what more do you have to show us? Well, one more thing that I want to show is that um, because the fact that uh, Windows ML, um, an app that's built on Windows ML, can actually, um, let me quit this. Um, it can actually load multiple models into the same app itself. So we actually built this. It's a uh, printed circuit board uh, defect detection that we built that we just switch and you can actually evaluate a different model with the same app in a very simple one click uh, itself. And uh, yeah, so um, I think that's a very, very, very cool feature. If you actually uh, architect your uh, architecture of the app correctly, then you can actually do these kind of things. So if your models have the same style of inputs and outputs, you can swap them to do different things. Exactly, and, and we actually built an abstraction layer inside our application to actually uh, uh, build on top of Windows ML APIs that allow us to do this contact, this model switching uh, very, very quickly. And that code, and uh, we have a blog to actually talk a little bit more about the details of that, uh, will be also released uh, at the same time. I mean, this is, this is amazing, right? Like it, I'm pretty excited to start, start working on this. Where can people go to find out more about Windows ML and how they can get started? So all the documentation for Windows ML is available on docs.microsoft.com under uh, UWP. Mm -hmm. um, that contains all the information on like how you, what you need to get started. Fantastic. Well, anything else you'd like to add? I, um, I think the last thing I'll add is that, hey, if anyone is interested, let's just start now. It's actually as easy as it is. We have all the documentation. We have sample apps. So there's almost nothing that prevents you from starting coding and, and, and actually run your models on Windows ML. Well, I'm going to go do that right now because seriously, I like most of you know, I love AI. And this is probably one of the coolest things. And it shows you know that from idea to modeling to doing the training in the cloud to getting this Onyx model to actually putting it in the hardware, we've kind of got the whole arch of, of what you want to do from idea to thing is, is actually pretty cool. Thanks so much for spending some time with us, my friends. Awesome. Thanks so much for watching. We're learning all about Windows ML and how you can supercharge your app, UWP applications today with AI. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.